Hello and welcome to episode 9 of the How to Make Any Game Mechanics series. If you're new to this series, in each episode we randomly choose a viewer's game mechanic suggestion. After you choose the suggestion, I try and create it in real time. This means that my thought process and any errors that come with it are all on the table for your viewing pleasure. As always, if you're following along and run into any hiccups along the way, there's a link to the GitHub for this project which contains every single episode in the description box below. If you've been keeping up with the series, you may know I took a short break to work on my 2.5D course. But now we're back, and by the time you're watching this, we have a few more episodes scheduled and ready to go. So without further ado, today's suggestion comes from Digital Oddities, who commented, next suggestion, Spike Trap. This person is also the one who suggested the grappling hook, so I'll try not to disappoint. Inside of Unity, I went ahead and created a new Episode 9 folder, called it Spike Trap, and an Episode 9 scene. We are currently inside that blank Episode 9 scene, and as always, let's go ahead and let's create a ground and a player. So let's right click, to the object, sprites, and let's make a square, and let's just call it ground for now. And let's add a box collider 2D. I'm just going to reset the transform. And we can duplicate the same thing and we can call it player. Let's click on our ground. Let's scale it out. And let's just make it a little bit thicker. And we're going to drag it to the bottom of our scene. Let's click on our player and let's give our player a rigid body component. And that's a rigid body 2D by the way. And let's also make sure we give it a player controller. This was made in the episode 1 of how to make any game mechanic, and it's just a simple back and forth movement script. I'm going to want to use transform movement, and I want my player to be pretty fast, so let's give him a move speed of 5. I also think our player should be able to jump, so I'm going to go ahead and add in our jump controller. And there's a few things we need to do to set this up. So let's right click on our player, let's make an empty object, and this is called ground ray transform. And on our player, we just scroll down to our jump controller and drag that in the slot. We are then going to choose the ground layer to be the ground. And for our number of jumps, let's just give him one jump with the jump force of, I don't know, let's go to 50. This jump controller was also made at some point during this series, so if you want to know exactly how it works, make sure you check the episode out. The next thing we can do is check this ground ray transform and we're just going to go ahead and move it to the bottom of our player. And our player should now be able to move around and jump. Let's just test it out inside Unity. So I hit play, he falls to the ground and we can move around and we can not jump. And that's because we did not take our ground ground. So let's do that now. Layer to ground, and let's hit play, let's try it again. And the player can now jump. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to exit our play mode and let's continue going forward. So the next thing we should do is probably go ahead and make our spikes. I'm just going to right click, make a 2D object, and I'm just going to make a triangle. Nice and pointy shaped as a spike would be. I'm going to reset the transform. I'm then going to duplicate it a couple times, and I'm just going to change the X position to one and then two. Eh, let's just do a, another one so we can have four spikes in total. And now that we have some spikes, I'm going to make another empty object and I'm just going to call it spikes. I'm then going to reset the transform yet again. I have no idea why the position goes all crazy when we make a new object, but that doesn't really matter, I suppose. So let's go ahead and make our sprites somewhat in the middle of that object and then just make that the parent of our triangles. The next thing we can do is we can go ahead and make these spikes actually do something to our player. So I'm just going to drag them down, I don't know, somewhere about here. And let's just make a little collider. So I'm just going to use a box collider. And let's just stretch this box collider to cover our spikes. And I'm going to give it the tag respawn. We can then click on our player. I'm just going to move them over a little bit. And we can go ahead and we can give our player a respawn script. This was made at some point again <laughs> in this series. And we're just repurposing the code and doing a scene respawn. So let's hit play. And when we run into these spikes, we should respawn. 
and we're not respawning because I didn't make these spikes respawn a trigger. So let's make it a trigger. And yeah, it works. So let's just make sure we do that outside of runtime. So there you have it. The spikes now kill the player. Episode's over and I'll see you next time. I'm just kidding. The suggestion did say spike trap. So we have to incorporate some sort of a way to make these a trap. Whether we decided we are going to put them below the stage and have some sort of a falling platform so you fall on top of them, or I don't know, maybe they come flying from out of the air and smack into the player. It doesn't really matter as long as it's some sort of a trap. There's lots and lots of ideas and lots of different directions you can go with. I think something that'd be pretty interesting is if they're just slightly below the ground and then when you walk over this little piece of ground, they shoot out of the ground and attack the player. So let's go ahead and I'm going to make another empty object and I'm going to call this spike trap. I'm then going to reset the transform yet again and just kind of move it into place. I'm going to make these spikes a child of our spike trap. We can then make yet a, another child and I'm just going to call it, I don't know, collider or something like that. And this is just going to be the trigger so when the player walks into it the spikes will shoot up out of the ground. So let's add a component and let's do a box collider 2D and we can make it a trigger and we're going to make it roughly the size of these spikes. So I'm just going to move it up a little bit just so we can get a good idea of where our spikes are. Something like so. And then we can put our spikes back into the ground. So in order to make our spikes come out of the ground, what we're going to do is we're going to create an animation. I'm going to want this animation to be on our spike trapped parent object. So I'm going to click the spike trapped parent object and I'm going to hit window animation animation. And now we're free to create an animation. I'm just going to hit create and we can just make a brand new folder. And I'm just going to call it animations. And inside, I'm going to put an idle animation. So for our idle animation, the spikes should basically just be exactly where they are. So I hit the little record button and I'm just going to move the spikes a little bit, basically to where they were. And then that animation is complete. Let's create a new clip and I'm just going to call it raise. And this is where these spikes are going to raise up. So I'm going to hit the record button, go over to about 20 frames and just put the spikes upward. I'm then going to copy that frame for, I don't know, let's say another 10 seconds. And then we can go ahead and we can come over to, I don't know, let's go to the 50 mark and we're going to paste our first frame. So now the spikes come up, stay up for a few seconds and then go back down into the ground. We can hit play and that's exactly what it looks like. Nothing too, too crazy. Let's uncheck play, uncheck record and exit out of our animation. We're now going to go into our animator and all we're going to do is just set this up so one trigger will go and make our raise animation play and then the raise will just return back to idle when it's done. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a trigger parameter and I'm just going to call it raise. And then let's just move these animations and make a transition from idle to raise and from raise to idle. For the idle to raise, this is not going to have exit time and we're going to make sure it's triggered only from the raise trigger. In our settings, I'm not going to want a transition on this. As we've already done a transition inside our animation, the next thing we can do is go from raise to idle and we want it to have exit time and we want our exit time to be at a hundred percent. So that's basically when the animation is completed. We don't want a transition duration, so just put it to zero. And now everything should work as planned. Let's hit play and we can just kind of check this out in our game. So I'm just going to move our animator over to this little window here and just hit the raise trigger. And the spikes come up and then they go back down and everything is working as intended. So now all we need to do is just check this little checkbox off in a script. So let's uncheck play and let's do exactly that. Let's click on our collider and let's add, I don't know, let's call it a spike trap script. And I'm going to open that up in VS Code. So I am inside VS Code and the very first thing we're going to do is make a serialized field and we're going to make a private animator and we can just call it anim. The next thing we're going to need is some reference to that parameter we made. So let's make a private const string and I'm just going to call it raise underscore param. 
and I'm going to make it equal to raise. So all this name is, is what we called our trigger parameter. So if I just quickly go back into Unity, it's just the name of this raise parameter inside our animator. We're going to continue where we left off and we're going to make a on trigger enter 2D. So we're not going to need a start or update. I'm just going to remove those and let's make a on trigger enter 2D. So all we're going to do is make an if statement. So if, and then we're just going to check if other dot game object dot tag is equal to player. So if the player is interacting with this trigger, we're going to make our animator set the trigger and it's going to be our raise par ram. And that's literally it. Let's save it up and let's head back into Unity. I am back in Unity and for our spike trap, all we need to do is make sure we set our anim variable. So just drag the spike trap into the slot. Before we forget, we also need to tag our player. So let's click on the player and let's just give it the tag player. And that's it. Let's go ahead and let's hit play. So now if I walk to the right, the spike trap should pop up and kill the player. And in fact, it did exactly that. I'm going to try and just guess and jump over it. And I kind of hit the end there. So let's do it again. <laughs> and it's very hard to tell where these spikes are. So to fix this problem, let's make a little bit of a telegraph so we know where the spikes are sitting. So let's uncheck play and in our spike trap, let's make a 2D sprite and let's make a square. And I'm just going to make it a little bit of a gray color. And let's just make sure we move our spike trap upward. And I'm just going to make the square go along the spikes. So just something like this. And I'm going to make it super thin. And then let's move our spike trap back into place. And then just move our square to the ground. I'm going to go ahead and make our order in layer one. So it's always above the ground. And these spikes are still really hard to get over. So I'm going to go ahead and just make our player able to jump twice. So now he's got a double jump and I should easily be able to get over these spikes. So now let's double jump over and I can avoid the spikes no problem. And that's it. That's episode nine of our how to make any game mechanics series. Make sure you like, subscribe and comment. And if you leave a future suggestion for another episode, I'll make sure to add it to the list. And who knows, maybe the next episode will be your suggestion. But that's all the time we have for this episode. And I will see you in the next one.